3.45 a.m. Today's date is December 11th, 2017, and the title of the episode is Countries Begin to Challenge the Petrodollar, It's Only a Matter of Time. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, as we can see, Bitcoin futures, they have gone live. And the central bankers, the bankers, those individuals that want to control the crypto market, well, they are going to try to do this with the futures market. But it looks like it's not going well at all. It looks like they had to shut it down for a little while because the price continually moved up. And what we're seeing right now is that the futures market that they created, which they thought was going to control the Bitcoin market, it doesn't seem like it's actually happening. Now, Nassim Nicholas Taleb has a warning for the no-brainer traders hoping to use Bitcoin futures to bet against the bubble. And he said, there is no way to properly short the Bitcoin bubble. Any strategy, strategy that doesn't entail options is not going to work. Just like we're seeing right now with the futures market. And also, John McAfee is out there and he's reinforcing what Talib is saying that, listen, you cannot control the cryptocurrency market in the same way you've been controlling the gold market, the silver market, the stock market, and everything else. He said, and this is coming from John McAfee, those of you in the old school who believe this is a bubble simply have not understood the new mathematics of the blockchain. Or you did not care enough to try. Bubbles are mathematically impossible in this new paradigm. So are corrections and all else. And what they're saying right now is that whatever the bankers, whatever the central bankers are going to try to do, where they're going to try to control what is happening with Bitcoin. Because remember, the cryptocurrency market is going against the fiat currency system which the central banks control. Now, yes, it is a digital system, but everything is created from their centralized location. And then the banks go ahead and create more, but it's all controlled by the central banks. And if you look, they're trying to convince you that Bitcoin is in a bubble. Bitcoin is not going to do well. Bitcoin is a fraud. Terrorists use it. And the mainstream media is continually doing this, saying that Bitcoin is going to collapse any minute. And it's very funny because when you look at the fiat currency regime and you look at Venezuela, Argentina, and you look at the rest of the countries, and if you go back in history, you can see all fiat currencies have collapsed. The central banking system fiat currency has collapsed, collapsed in the past. And if you really look at this, you could see, you know, from history and what has been done in the past, what would you go with? A central, central bank fiat system or a cryptocurrency? which is completely decentralized, which is controlled by the people, and it's very difficult to manipulate. Well, it looks like the people, and not just the people, but other countries are looking to use the crypto market to use it for many different things, like loaning money, maybe for oil, and many other things. Now, what we're seeing is we're seeing a total breakdown of the entire economic system and it's happening very very quickly and bank of america is out there once again and they said that we've seen this movie before it ends with a recession now i do believe from everything that we've been looking at and all the indicators we've been looking at and everything that we've been going through the recession actually started back in 2016 and since that time period they've been manipulating the economy to make us believe that the economy is still strong they did this back prior to 2008 actually the Recession really started way before that, but again, they manipulated everything. Now, we see what's happening is that the crypto market is gaining ground right now. And the central bank, because of what is happening with the cabal, they're having a huge amount of trouble trying to figure out a way to switch us to a new system. And what is happening at the same exact time is that this people's currency is rising up and they don't know what to do. And they're stuck here. And they're very, very worried about this. Now, as the economy continually falls apart, we're going to get a lot of financial pundits coming out saying, yeah, you know, something is happening here. Something doesn't make sense. And we're starting to see a lot of, a lot of them come out of the woodwork and say, yeah, we've seen this before. And when we see this, 
it doesn't end well. Bank of America's head of securitization, Chris Flanagan, well, he's been looking at the yield curve and he's looking at the spread and looking at the flattening yield curve and they're scratching their heads saying, yes, yeah, something is up right now. Unemployment is low and probably headed lower. Of course, it's going to head lower because they're going to continually manipulate the numbers. The Fed is intent on raising rates to stave off future inflation. And he's saying that we've seen this before. And typically it ends up with a flat or inverted yield curve. And we think the most likely path forward is that the two-year, 10-year spread reaches zero or inverts sometime over the next year, which will bring us into a recession. And we are seeing all of this. Now, remember, they are looking at this and believing the data that's being fed to them. We're looking at this saying that this is manipulated data which means that we've been in a recession because we know that the GDP numbers have been manipulated. We know that the unemployment numbers have been manipulated. We know that Fed has been manipulating the stock market, manipulating inflation, manipulating everything that we look at. And it tells us one thing. We are in a recession from everything that we looked at. This is not a recovery. You don't have retail stores closing down in a growing economy. And we already debunked the online sales propaganda that the corporate media is going to continually use to make us believe that it's okay. We also know that the housing market has been pumped up in 20 cities. And we know that the banks have been keeping houses off the market to make house prices move up. This is not an open free market. We know the stock market has been controlled by central banks around the world. They're buying the FANG stocks. They're pumping it up, trying to keep it above board so everyone believes that the economy is still doing well and we know that the u.s treasury steve mnuchin came out and said listen this tax bill is going to be incredible because it's going to make it so the economy never goes into a recession again which is absolutely ridiculous if you have a central bank you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to end up in a recession or a depression because this is how they rein in their wealth. And what's very interesting, Patrick Watson over at Malden Economics recently made a brilliant observation. And when he was looking at the tax bill, he found that there is a recession risk hidden inside of this bill. And he said the gap between the grain line, the potential GDP, and the red line, actual GDP, and I'm looking at this graph of the potential and the actual GDP represents unused capacity. Now, you can see we had a lot of it at the recession's 2009 depth. The gap slowly shrank since then. Now it is closed. Sounds great. Sounds like this is great news, but don't start to celebrate just yet. The actual GDP can't stay above the potential GDP for long before bad things start to happen. And when we look at the output gap of percent of real GDP versus potential GDP, and you go back over time, guess what happens when the GDP stays above the potential GDP? Well, we end in a recession, a depression. And here we are once again we're heading towards the same exact scenario. And when we go back in time, we can see this every single time. So this tax reform could well provide for a modest bump to GDP growth, but that growth bump is being offset by the Federal Reserve tightening its monetary policy by lifting interest rates. And this is something that we really haven't seen before either. And having both of these happen at the same exact time, well, this is going to end up in a disaster. Now, we've seen a lot of other indicators that we've mentioned where they have a pretty darn good track record going back to the 70s and even further than that, where every time certain things happen, we're in a recession. And this just this is just another one that we add to the list. And we could see right now that all these indicators are pointing to the same exact thing. The only thing that's keeping us away from all of this is the manipulation. And you know when you manipulate anything, you only can do it for a certain period of time before everything starts to fall apart. 
And you can see it like in companies like Enron. You can see it with different Ponzi schemes. You can see countries that have done this in the past where they tried to create a lot of currency to keep the system going. And it sounds great. It looks great. It feels great. But in the end, what happens? The whole thing falls apart. Now, we need to remember something very important. The entire Fiat system was created to make everyone believe that this system is the system that we should be on. Now, since 19, well, actually going before, uh, back before 1913, but here in this country, um, there were other central banks that were removed and Andrew Jackson removed the last central bank. But in 1913, we see the central bank came back and they were able to, you know, get into the system once again and take control of the system. And everyone needs to remember the FIAT system, it creates free money in unlimited quantities. And what it does is it, it impoverishes everyone who holds the currency. Now, in the initial boost phase, the issuance of nearly free money to borrowers, qualified or not, generates the illusion of prosperity. That's why in the beginning, everyone feels great. There's not a lot of debt. The currency is being printed. And everyone thinks, wow, this is incredible. But once the boost phase, phase ends, reality sets in and the marginal borrows, borrowers default. Inflation moves from assets, good inflation, to world world essentials, bad inflation. And it create, they have to create more free money to overcome the problems. Cryptocurrencies, on the other hand, when we look at the same exact situation, they are like fiat currencies. The difference is, they don't give you the illusion of wealth. They don't add interest on the creation of currency. And since you're not adding interest, you're not stealing the wealth from the people, from the people. And we can see that central banks with a fiat currency, they steal the wealth from the people and it gets worse and worse as time goes on. And eventually what happens is the system gets too big, too bloated, too much debt that they need to restart it. And this is what they're in process of doing. And this is why the cabal has been out there and the central banks have been out there pushing war because they need a distraction. They need to make sure that everyone doesn't realize what is happening. And they say, oh, look, there's a war. A war happened. Now we can restart the system. And all of a sudden, everything is restarted. Everyone feels good because you're in the initial boost phase of their current, their FIAT currency system. And eventually what happens over the many years, the whole thing falls apart once again. And what we're seeing right now is the central banks, they've prepared for this move. The cabal was preparing for some type of an event and everything is now in chaos because of cryptocurrencies. It looks like cryptocurrencies it was created on purpose to put the system into chaos, to shift everything from the central bank to the people. And countries, they're starting to realize that, wait a minute, we can start bypassing the petrodollar. We can start bypassing the sanctions. Now, Venezuela didn't mention this. They said, listen, we can start our petro coin. I'm just calling it a petro coin. It's a cryptocurrency that is backed by oil. And we can use this on the blockchain and bypass the sanctions. Russia is thinking about doing this. Iran is thinking about doing this. And Syria is thinking about doing this. All the countries that have sanctions against them will move away from the petrodollar into something completely different. And cryptocurrencies makes it very easy for them to bypass everything. So right now, we can see the Arab League, they're threatening the petrodollar. We see Venezuela, Russia, Iran, Syria, and many other nations, most likely North Korea is gonna jump on board with this, where they're threatening the entire dollar system. And what this means is, is that it's just a matter of time. And everything that we talked about, where we said, you know, everyone will start moving away from the dollar, the petrodollar. Well, it's happening very, very slowly. And now it's accelerating because, because of this birth of cryptocurrencies is making it a lot easier for countries to say, you know something, we have the ability to do this and they're standing up to the old system and the old system right now. Well, that's just it. It's the old system 
and everything is about to change. And when we go through this change, it's going to be a little painful for those people who aren't prepared. I mean, think about it. If you don't know that anything is happening and you're holding on to dollars and you're thinking that everything is great, you have your job, and all of a sudden they tell you that the dollar is devalued. It's not worth anything. And we're going to start something new. But you can trade that dollar in for pennies on the dollar to get the new currency. Well, yes, you'll be able to make out and you'll get something for it, but you will not retain your wealth. Think about the person that's prepared who has gold and silver, because once the dollar is devalued and the entire um, system is free of manipulation, gold and silver, and this is why Russia and China have been purchasing a lot of gold and silver, they're going to rise to a new level, depending on what the currency is going to be. If you're holding cryptocurrency and the new currency is cryptocurrency, guess what? You'll be able to use that going forward. And as we can see, that's continually rising. And once everyone gets in and everyone has a phone, it makes it very easy to use. You can use your gold and silver because that will rise in value to trade it in for the new currency. If you have cryptocurrency, you'll be right on board for the new system. And if it's a completely different currency, you still have gold and silver that retains your wealth. It's an insurance policy. If you're just holding dollars, guess what? You're going to have a very difficult time. And when we go through this period of time where we're transitioning, where the dollar loses value, and you remember a lot of the country is not realizing what is happening, and I'm not just saying the country, the world, guess what happens? Credit's going to freeze up for a little while. You're going to, it's going to be difficult to get products. It happened in the Soviet Union. It happened in Germany. And we're going to see inflation because as the value of the dollar continually decreases, the cost of goods goes up because you need more of those dollars to pay for it. And you're going to use as much as you possibly can. But during this period of time, most likely they will stop people from taking funds out of the bank because remember, you're not going to need a hundred dollars. You're going to need thousands of dollars just to pay for an item and you'll bleed the banks of all whatever cash they have, or you'll be asking for the cash and they just won't have any to give you. So you know the banks are definitely going to close down for a bank holiday at this point. And of course, without any type of an event, this will be a disaster for the central banks because how do you explain this? They can't. This is why they need something to distract everyone from what is coming. And normally they have some type of war, an event or something like that. But at this point, it looks like we're heading to a period where that event might not happen. Actually, it'll be a good thing for the people. We will go through some pain, but for those people who are prepared, you'll know how to weather the storm. Those people who are not prepared, it's going to be a little bit more difficult and they might lose a lot of their wealth. And a lot of people in other countries have lost a lot of their wealth going through a period where they were not prepared. I mean, think about it. Go back just to the Great Depression. Those people that had gold and silver and they just held on to it and said, listen, I'm keeping it. I'm not I'm not giving it up. I don't want the paper currency. I'm going to keep it. It was twenty dollars an ounce. And think about it. If you had if you had a hundred ounces or a thousand ounces, and you had a lot of silver, it was revalued to thirty five dollars an ounce. And all of a sudden, your wealth jumped. The same thing is going to happen here. And Russia and China, they realize this. They know that the gold and silver prices have been manipulated and kept down, and they know it's going to rise. And this is why they've been purchasing it at such a cheap price. The same thing is going to happen. Those people that got in at Bitcoin, Dash, Litecoin, you name it, at a very low price, you know, $10, $200, $500, $1,000, in the end, they will make out. Those people that come in later at $20,000, $30,000, well, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because it's going to be difficult to get that cryptocurrency. So this is why we've been saying from the beginning to prepare because it's something that's going to happen over a period of time, which we've been seeing because they've been trying to hold off eventually what is going to happen. And we see that there's so much chaos right now that the central banks, they're losing their grip. The cabal is losing their grip and the economy is deteriorating and it's going to be a complete and utter disaster because there's so many different financial pundits out there right now admitting, yes, we're heading into major problems because we've been seeing it all along and they're seeing it and there's nothing else they can do but say, yes, there are problems. We're seeing strange things happen and we know that everything else is manipulated. 
And eventually what's going to happen, with a snap of a finger, everything's going to come to a screeching halt, and people are going to be scratching their heads going, what just happened here? It happened in 2008. People thought everything was fantastic. I remember talking to people, I'm buying another house, I have three of them right now, I'm renting it out, and a snap of a finger, all of a sudden they have three houses, they have mortgages on these houses, they have no renters, and they went bankrupt. They didn't know what to do. They were not prepared because they were living in the illusionary world. The same thing is happening right now. We've been living in the central bank illusionary world. It will be coming to an end. This is why you need to be prepared and ready. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.